I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything, call it. All right. Heads in. This is legendary actor Gene Jones. Most of you know him from this scene in No Country for Old Men, which has become one of the most memorable scenes in movie history. We have to go. So let's go together. Our time's up. Many of you probably remember him in The Sacrament, based on the infamous Jim Jones, Jonestown cult. Longtime viewers may recall he was in Texas Cotton with George Hardy. Or maybe you've seen him in Robert Redford's final movie, The Old Man and the Gun, or the standoff at Sparrow Creek, which I've also reviewed here on the channel. He even played Sweet Dave in The Hateful Eight. So I'm a huge fan of his work, and the director of Texas Cotton, Tyler Russell's next movie, also features Gene. It's called Cyst, and it is a disgusting sci-fi comedy about a giant cis monster, also featuring George Hardy from Troll 2 and Greg Sestaro from The Room. I was extremely lucky to speak with Mr. Jones in one of his first interviews he's ever done of this kind. We talked about his famous scene with Javier Bardem, working with Quentin Tarantino, and something magical that happened when they filmed his monologue in The Sacrament. Here is that conversation. I know you had quite a few things on your, your resume before No Country, but that was obviously kind of the seems to be kind of the big high profile thing that got people to notice you more, but how did you come to be in that? Was it a traditional audition thing or did they, they yes, go and see was, you on it stage? Was, or? It was, it was show business working exactly as it's supposed to work. Um, I did not match the character description that the Coen brothers had written and put out on the breakdown that they sent to casting people and agents uh, in the book and uh, in the Coen brothers' description, uh, that character was supposed to be a little scrawny man, white-haired and balding, and and uh, my agent had that guy too, and she sent that person, and she sent me, and I got it. Do you know when you're there working on it Maybe you don't know how good it's going to be, but did you have a sense that it was going to be one of their more standout pictures? I, I did, um, um, mainly because of Javier Bardem. Uh, he was just wonderful, and he was he was serious as death. Um, and this is not true anymore. But at the time, that was that five minutes of talk was the longest dialogue scene he had ever done in English. Oh. He was a big star in Europe and in Spanish films and spoke Spanish. And it was his first day of shooting. It, oh, was, the wow. first, it was the first thing he shot. And he was, he was very, uh, I wouldn't say nervous about it, but he was, he was uh, very concerned that it go well, that he be understood, that he get his character nailed right away in the first thing he was shooting, which is all this talk. And uh, he wanted to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, and we did. And uh, um, just right up until the minute we walked on set, we were in his trailer going over the dialogue. And uh, it was shot. Uh, the Coen brothers had the idea that it was a kind of set piece, which it was. And um, they, every time, every take we made was the whole thing. Uh, we, we did the five minutes probably 15 times, but it was the entire five minutes, you know, with the cut in for the, for the candy wrapper and the quarters and, and you know, that kind of thing. But we wow. always did the whole thing every time we did it. How do you find that like your theater experience has carried over? So I feel like I can see it in a couple of things. No country is a good one. I think the sacrament maybe even more so. But in terms of what you're doing on set the day of, on a, on a scene either like the No Country scene or your monologue in the sacrament, kind of what, how would you describe the difference, I guess, between what you do on stage versus on set? Is there one? I, 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 it, there's not a great difference for me. Um, 
the I think the key uh, to acting uh, is to listen. Listen and watch and be aware of what's going on around you and what your other actors are doing and what they're giving you. But really, really listen. And on a movie set, uh, that's pretty hard to do sometimes because there's 50 people standing around and uh, people are sometimes actually moving around, moving a camera, moving a microphone. And your job is just to, to stay with it and, and, and be there and listen to the right thing. And the right thing is your, your, your other actor. Right. Well, then I, I guess another question I have, if I'm going to compare those two, which is just sort of something I'm doing in my head at the moment, because they are very different, but they stand out to me, those two performances, the, the Sacrament and No Country. Well, the interesting thing about Sacrament was the first time you see me, well, you see me walking up to the revival tent, but uh, the first scene is, is the interview. And it was 18 pages of script and about 18 minutes long. I, the film version cut it down to 12 minutes, but it started out 18 minutes. And I did the, I memorized the whole thing and we did it in one take. And what, oh, you, wow. see, what you see in the sacrament is pretty much the first take. And wow. the thing that really set it afire uh, for me and for Ty, the director and everybody else, was the congregation. And we, we started about 10 o'clock at night. And these, uh, these uh, the congregation had been on the set all day, very long day for them. But as I threw them in, they started wanting to respond to me and say something back to me. And when that started coming, boy, what, did I catch fire. And, you know, I, I knew I could, I could, I could, if I asked for something, I would get an answer. And uh, it, it was, it was one of the most exciting things I ever did. Yeah, it sounds like it's still pretty fresh in your <laughs> oh, mind. Yes. I, oh, yeah, yes. are you, are you, so you're, are you telling me that, you know, obviously you prepared a lot, you had a lot of dialogue to learn and, and rehearse, mm -hmm. but once you did it the first time on set, that it was a little, that it was more electric because of the, the yes. congregation? Yes, wow. yes, they were wonderful. And, uh, and this, this surprised me and it surprised Ty, but we knew it was, it was great. We knew it was wonderful what they were giving us back. And, um, and Ty, uh, you know, swung around and got some shots of them reacting to me and, and telling me something but he never directed them as to you say this here and you say that, and then you say that, and then you two people stand up or something. He never gave them direction. We left it loose for them to jump up, chime in, sing out, uh, whatever they wanted to do. And uh, it was, it was pretty thrilling actually. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, some of the most interesting stuff about filmmaking is, you know, I've watched that movie more than once. I'm familiar with it had no idea that that went into the process because it could have been, it could have gone a very different way. It could have been very, yes. very planned out, but yes. that organic nature is really interesting. Something I did let them know that they could talk back and I didn't ask them to talk back. And uh, none of the dialogue as written is directed to the congregation, but I knew I wanted the congregation on my side and somehow they knew that it was okay to come in and they did and people the the when we, we went to a lot of festivals with the sacrament and the people <clears throat> were one of the questions i always got was well you really must have studied jim jones a lot to do this and i didn't study him at all there was no reason to study him. It was a waste of my time to study him because I'm older than he, I look nothing like him. And what I, I saw my acting job in the sacrament to be, to be the guy that people would follow out into the jungle. 
and who whom would you follow out into the jungle? Well, you would follow your granddad out into the jungle. And that's what I tried to be was everybody's granddad. So you, you've got a character like that that's more fleshed out and is a more pivotal part of the movie or a more integral part of the movie. But then if we go back to No Country, you've got this very important scene, but you're, it's the only time you're on screen. How much of the character is developed either by the Coens or by you, the actor, it's obviously stuff that's not on screen, that's completely irrelevant to the I, story. I, I, I never think that way first. I, I eventually, I, I do, after I get in, in the, with, into some command of, of the script, of what's really written, of what the writer wanted, and often the director is the writer, and, uh, I, I, I don't spend time dreaming up a backstory or, or foreshadowing something to come or, uh, you know, worrying about my other life. I, I, I want the five minutes. I want to be so totally in the five minutes that you can go home and figure out my other life. To do that, if, if you focus on that five minutes, you feel like the rest sort of like, I guess the, the richness of the character sort of comes through as long as you're focusing on that five minutes? Yes, I, I, I think so. And uh, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not big on historical research. I, I, I don't uh, invent a backstory. I don't spend the time. You, it's always now. It's always the present when you're acting, it's always now. And you can't act a backstory and you can't act the future. All you have is now. Well, what, what do you look for? So like, obviously, you know, the Coen brothers cast you in a movie, Quentin Tarantino cast you in a movie. It's a no brainer. It's something, you know, I think almost any actor would wanna do. But when it comes to projects where you're, you're maybe going to work with somebody where you're not familiar with their work or you're certainly not familiar with the way that they work, speaking of a director or a writer, what do you look for when you decide that you're going to work with somebody like that? Like, like Tyler, for just a, for example, and not necessarily what did you look for in him, but the first time you're going to work with somebody like him, what are you looking for? It, it's always the same thing. I start with the script. And even if the director did not write the script, Sunk in it preached this director and made him want to do it, even if he didn't write it. So I, I, I want a good, solid, sensible story. And uh, I've made some films where I think I wasn't very good. And uh, I, they were films that I made for the wrong reasons. They were the times that I broke my rule about the script. What are you looking for in the script? Is it the story or is it just, is it everything? Is it the dialogue, how it's written, how it's pieced together? All of, all of it. Uh, but the story has to make some sense and it can be far out and Texas cotton is far out, but it made, you know, it, it was mm -hmm. possible for the story to happen. And Tyler being from Texas got the dialogue, right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm offered a lot of, regional stuff, of course. Um, I've lived in New York for 40 years and I'm, a, I'm the only actor my age who's never been on Law and Order uh, because, oh. I, <laughs> because I don't look or sound like a New Yorker. But I'm, a, I'm not a native, but I've been here for a lot of my life. And um, so I, 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 and I'm offered a lot of regional stuff, you know, with a bunch of uh, hickey, dialogue written by somebody who's never been to the south or to the west or the midwest does the dialogue sound right and and when i read a script usually i read it twice and the second time through i actually speak my lines aloud to hear them said you know how do they fit in the mouth and does this really sound like something i've ever heard somebody say is there any sort of um projects or type of movie or anything that you've wanted to do that you've yet to to put on your resume like when i ask you that question is there something that stands out or or not 
Uh, no, not really. I, I'm grateful for what I get. Uh, I certainly love working with Tyler, and I, I feel that I will work with Tyler again. And uh, George Hardy. Oh, have you talked with him yet? George was the first, I guess you'd say, celebrity that I ever interviewed. I actually drove, he lives about three hours from me, and I drove out to his house mm -hmm. and sat down with him for about an hour. That was my yeah. first time sort of talking with somebody. The nicest guy in the world. And Probably just, the nicest person I've ever met. Just just maybe, yeah. Just maybe. And anyway, the, the little thing I did insist, uh, I, I just couldn't pass up the chance to work with George again and with Tyler again. And several of these, uh, the cis people were in Texas Cotton. Torin, the kid, is so funny. And, uh, you know, they're great company on the set and off the set. And I, I just like them, you know, and, uh, and Tyler is somebody I could, I could question a script line with, and I, I have probably done it. I don't remember what it was. I love seeing you in that movie though, by the way, because you, just me as being a movie nerd, you stood out to me as a person that's got the strongest resume, I guess most, the most sort of like, I guess, critically respected resume out of anybody in there. And then your role, I kept wondering, I'm like, what is Tyler going to do with Gene? Because you can't, I'm not going to spoil it, but you kept popping up. And then when the payoff happens for your yeah. character, I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. It was, yeah, it, it was pretty it's cool. Fun. It's fun. It, it, yeah. it was fun to see you in that. I thought that was, I thought well, that I'm, was. I'm not a snob. I, uh, yeah. I, I like all kinds of film uh, to watch. Um, and my, my wife never understood this, but I love silent film. I, I, you know, and I'll, I'll never be in a silent film. Probably. I wish I could be, I think it would be interesting, but for some reason, I, I, I immediately buy into it. You know, when a silent film starts and the world is black and white and gray and people move their mouths, but you don't hear them talk. I, I'm, I'm with it. I, I go with it immediately. You know, when that, when that starts, Ooh, I'm there. You know? Yeah. Well, they've said if the ones that have stood the test of time, they still work because they did everything else. Right. Yes. You're missing kind of a key piece. Yep. And they have to nail everything else. And I think that's why those movies have stood up. It's funny you mentioned, I've just recently gotten into sort of watching Charlie Chaplin movies. I mean, I was familiar with them before, but uh, since HBO Max released, they have so many yep. on there. I had only ever seen a couple of the major ones. And it's still, you know, it's a hundred years later. It's, yeah. it's, it's not necessarily relevant so much, even though it is a little bit, it's still just incredibly entertaining. It is. The Kid is just, it's one of the best movies ever. Uh, the Great Dictator. And, uh, you know, good acting is good acting, wh wherever it yeah. comes from, you know, and it can come on the, in the opera stage or it can come in a little theater in Virginia or, you know, it, it's just good. And uh, if you've not seen John Barrymore's Jekyll and Hyde, see it. You know, it's probably been a long time. It's probably been a really long time. I probably didn't have an appreciation for it when I did see it. See it. Yep, I'll revisit I, it. I saw I, it. I, a few, it. I saw it a few months ago, and it was just thrilling. It was just wonderful. I'll do it soon. And there's no makeup. He does no makeup. The, the you know, it, the, it's all the face. Yes, it's all the face yeah. and and the hands, the body, his hands, yeah, gnarled and wonderful well fantastic I'll, I'll definitely revisit because it's been a long time i've got a new i've got a newer appreciation for kind of things that were done really well uh, back then so i, I have recently been re-watching some some older movies and i'm enjoying them a lot more now than i used to so, well gene it was really fantastic talking with you i'd like to let you get back to, to my your phone life. calls yes i'm <laughs> <laughs>